So yeah, so um, this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, we, you guys are actually in the middle of your mod four project. Is that right? Just give me a thumbs up. Like you guys in mod four project. Cool. So you guys, um, we're actually going to talk about like capstone and everything like that. And as Raphael probably gave you some details and stuff like that. Basically, it's going to be I'm going to lead you guys through capstone and into graduation. Um, doesn't mean Raphael's gone. <laughs> you can definitely hit up Raphael. I'm sure he wouldn't mind it at all. Um, you know, just saying hey and stuff like that. But that gives him opportunity to also like help out with a new cohort as well. Um, so. Uh, the good news is that you get to kind of have a new perspective of a new instructor. Bad news is a little bit like, oh, you might miss Raphael, right? But of course, he's not going to come. Um, so one thing I really like about Capstone, and especially going from Mod 4 Project into Capstone, is that your Mod 4 Project is kind of like, in my opinion, like your baby Capstone. It's going to be something where it's like you get to have a project that you chose, you know, um, you get to choose like a data set. You've already done this, I think, in Mod 3, where you chose a data set, didn't ML, right? Yeah, does that look? Seem familiar? Okay, so you get another opportunity to do, choose a data set, um, do some more advanced, you know, uh, deep learning, you know, opportunities, stuff like that. And your capstone is kind of like saying, okay, now you really get to fully do whatever you would like to do. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. And I have a little bit of a, just like a little notebook and stuff. And I'll share this out to, um, well, I'll tell you, I'll explain it in a bit. But I'll make sure you guys have access to it as well. So that way you guys can make sure you can reference this again if you would like to. So first thing, like I don't know how much Raphael has necessarily talked about Capstone, so we're going to kind of go through some stuff, some sources and stuff about what we're going to do. Um, actually, I don't know why this is here. Oh, it's hiding. Sorry, my window is kind of messed up. Okay. So we'll talk about a few things. Um, this, I have it planned out for an hour. It might not necessarily be an hour. Um, if it does go an hour, awesome. Um, but we don't actually have to take that whole time. Uh, for the future, like we'll start doing capstone, like um, study groups like this on August 10th. So hopefully after you guys are done with your mod four project that we get some focus on mod four project and then go into the capstone. But know that especially with you guys being full-time, it's gonna go quickly, right? It's not gonna be um, just a leisurely walk through Capstone. It's gonna happen real quick. So, all right. So I'm gonna talk about some resources later, but first we're gonna talk about Capstone. So Capstone's kind of like your big project, right? And it's, again, it's only a month long, right? <laughs> like it is very, very quick. So know that there's certain limitations to this. It doesn't have to be a graduate PhD thesis, some crazy project that no one's ever thought of. Like that's not what the point of your cap Capstone is. So it's important to kind of Rain and say, okay, what exactly is this thing? So the main goal, and this is my goal for you guys, is that in the end of the at the end of the day, it's the capstone. Even though it is an assessment, it's kind of your go-to project to talk to, like, uh, inter in the interview. So a recruiter or interviewer comes and talks to you and says, hey, like, tell me about a data science project you've done. You can talk about this project. And one big thing for me is saying you can talk about it passionately, meaning that you can talk about like what this project means um, to you. Like if someone asks you a follow-up question, you're like ready for it to talk about it. It's like, oh yeah, I thought about this. Or like at least like, oh, you know, I did consider this. Like, oh, I haven't considered this, but maybe I do it this way. So that's the kind of idea what you should think about for your capstone. Do you have to be an expert in it? Absolutely not. But I think the big thing about it is showing your passion and showing that you've done work on it really shines through in an interview. Okay. So one thing I'll put here is like I put an end to end. So I'm sure you guys have heard end to end at this point, right? Give me a thumbs up if you've heard that phrase end to end. Some, some, okay. Um, so good. So an end to end project really means just basically from the very beginning, from like the formation of what this project is, collecting data, um, whatever that exactly means, you know, processing it, um, going through your EBA, you know, understanding what the data are about. And then going into saying, okay, like, let's go into inference. Like, what do we, can we tell about this? What insights can we bring about this to our stakeholders? And our stakeholders, you know, we talk about business stakeholders, but this could also be for nonprofits, basically the people who have a reason to care about what you're talking about. And for data science in particular, being able to extract this information and be able to say, oh, this is why this matters is a huge part. Like, um, I don't know if you guys have been already, I mean, I'm sure you guys have already been looking for jobs and stuff like this. Um, you'll notice sometimes, I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but data scientist isn't the only um, uh, keyword that like data science positions actually have. One of them is decision scientist. Has anyone come across decision scientist at some point? So I see some head shakes. Yeah, so one of my friends, um, a PhD, uh, 
physics, right, actually transitioned over to data science. Uh, fun fact, his, his last name is Mystery, so he is Dr. Mystery, which is just the most amazing thing ever. Um, but uh, he actually, his first job um, as a data scientist was as a decision scientist at PayPal. So that is pretty typical. And we'll talk a whole bunch about this during like this capstone time. So it doesn't have to be just about capstone, but about you finding a job. Because in the end, I mean, I'll be frank, it doesn't matter about your capstone, right? Like who cares if I pass you on your capstone if it doesn't mean you get a job, right? Like I think that's the whole point for you guys being here is like, hey, I want to get a job in this field. So that's kind of like my goal for you guys. So we can talk about career advice too. Um, so that's kind of what to look forward to. Any questions so far just like, basics of capstone like what's going on sound all pretty good all right cool you guys are pretty sweet <laughs> and it helps if i do it like a thumbs up head nods help but sometimes like there's a weird lag so like it looks like you're standing still um so just give me a thumbs up if things are going there and feel free to interrupt me okay so expectations so expectations for the capstone from you basically they're very short because all it is about saying hey at this point you've done like two other we will be have we'll have done two other projects, um, choosing your data set and doing like machine learning or um, inference and stuff like this, is that your main thing is that you should be able to talk about this project in an interview. If someone says, hey, tell me about your capstone, you shouldn't have to hesitate, be like, well, let me think about that for a second or let me look this up. Like you should be able to just feel like natural just talking about it in a normal conversation. Um, the big part for me is that doesn't matter too much what you can you do. The big thing is that you can pull insight. And pull insight, there's not one way to do this. A typical way we kind of talk about this, and like you'll hear the curriculum when you look at them, um, just thumbs up, who's looked already at the capstone like requirements on the learn code? Thumbs up if you had, thumbs down if you haven't. And that's okay if you haven't yet. Okay, good. All right, that's right. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Um, when you guys do read it through, um, you might hear, you might read some stuff, and it might be a little contradicting to what I'm saying. That's okay, right? The main thing is that you're going to be doing a project that shows overall insight from end to end. Um, but my focus is going to be pulling insight, and that can be ML, but it can also be other things like analysis and such. And I'll kind of talk a little bit more about that. Okay. So those are your two minute expectations. Everything else, like honestly my goal for you guys, like my personal goal is to get you guys done before graduation, right? Um, will that happen for 100% of the people I have for Capstone? No. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine. Because again, your goal, like your ultimate goal is about getting a job, right? So if it takes you an extra week, it takes you an extra two weeks, that's perfectly fine. Like, you know, life goes on, you know, no one cares that you finish your Capstone two weeks later, other than maybe like for us to say, oh, where you are in the cohort. But like for you, when you're searching for a job, no one's going to ask you, oh, how quickly did you finish this capstone? Like, oh, it took you two extra weeks. Well, we're not going to hire you. Tell you what, you're not going to tell them that. So it's perfectly fine. All right. So expectations from me. So this is what I want you guys to expect from me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be a guide. Now, I want to be really clear. I am not an expert in, like, I'm not going to be an expert in anything, everything, right? I'm going to not know all the answers. I am going to probably learn some stuff as I do it with every capstone student. I learn stuff as you guys learn it too sometimes. Like, I'm like, oh, like, I didn't know you could do that. This field, you know, in data science is very, very broad, right? Like, there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Um, so don't know, though, that my goal is not to also, like, hold your hand through it completely, if that makes sense. My goal is kind of being like a parent where I kind of let you walk, but I'm going to catch you if you kind of stumble, okay? So that means I'm not going to like purposely check in with you like every single day and say, hey, like, what did you do? And it's like, oh, I didn't do this. Like, well, you should do this. And, or say, oh, here's a data set you should use instead. If you ask me and say, hey, like, I have some ideas for data sets. Like, what do you think? I'll definitely talk about it, right? I'll check in with you guys, obviously, being like, hey, like, let's see where we're at. But I'm not going to be someone who's like, this is also my personality. I'm not going to force like my will onto you guys and be like, hey, this is the absolute deadline. Because you know what? Like, looking for a job and stuff like that that's going to take some real grit and like in the sense that they being like you have to apply you're going to get some rejections you're going to get some acceptance you're going to have some celebrations you're going to have some losses right but it's important to have that and i'm sure you guys have done this right for over four months now right um you guys have been you know doing exactly this so i'm not worried about you guys at all but of course just know i'm here to help you guys out as needed okay so with the guiding basically goes with like help with organization right 
And so my thing is to help you organize a capstone that first of all can look good on your um, GitHub pro uh, profile, right? So that's the thing that basically people will see first when they look at your GitHub profile and start going through it a lot. Um, but also organization and like timing and stuff like that. So I'll have suggested deadlines and stuff like this. And I'll kind of have in our one ones or even in a group uh, scenario say, hey, you know, this is where you should be or this is where I think you should be. Or you know what, maybe cut it off here. Like I know you were really set on this goal, but let's modify it slightly so we can get something done in a timely manner that still, you know, has value. Okay. All right. Um, advice on what will make your project good to talk about, like basically making a good project, right? And a good project doesn't necessarily mean like something that no one's ever done before, right? It doesn't have to be like completely new research. Again, this is not like a graduate thesis. Okay. Um, talk about implementation. So that means like if you have things like, you know, how do I do this, you know, in Canvas or how do I do this in Python or how do I do this, you know, specific thing, I can help you out. It doesn't necessarily mean I'll be an expert in it. Um, but I can at least point you in the right direction and kind of search with you, right? And this is, this is useful for everyone, um, is that implementing something really big can actually be quite troublesome sometimes, right? And then, of course, it kind of goes with implementation, advice about the technical. So, like, advice about, like, say, hey, like, you know, I'm trying to do a neural network, you know, how do I do this, you know? It's like, hey, I'm trying to use TensorFlow, I'm trying to do this. Um, I'm trying to use PyTorch, so like, cool. Like, my expertise is more in TensorFlow, but I can help you out with PyTorch, or I can try doing this, or say, hey, I'm trying to do this with Plotly. It's like, okay, well, let's try to go through this together. Um, will I know every single library you come across? Absolutely not, right? And you should not expect to also be an expert in every single library that's out there that's related to data science, because that's unrealistic, too. Okay. All right. Overall, how are we feeling? Any questions? Cool. All right. <laughs> So, okay, so general timelines. So the main thing to note here is basically your course completion is set for September 4th, right? So that's kind of, I don't know if that's officially the graduation, but I know that's what on like the calendar basically, it's like, oh, that is the time you finish, right? Um, so working backwards from there, it's very quick, right? You can see this, this is like about four weeks and that's about it. So these deadlines right here that I have for you guys, so August 17th, 21st, 24th, don't take those as being like, oh, well, I can wait until this point. In my head is that if you hit these deadlines, it's because we need something to move you along. Does that make sense? So I say like main data chosen, August 17th. I would hope that you guys pick your data set with it, like basically set three days aside when you start doing your capstone. And within those three days, at the third day, you're like, all right, this is my data set. These are my data sets or whatnot, right? And be able to go from there. Um, a big thing we'll talk about with some common issues, a big thing people do is that they try to look for the perfect data set for their project. And it just takes them way too long, where by the time they find a good data set that they are satisfied with, then they realize like, oh, shoot, I still have to do exploring and cleaning and then I actually have to do the project. Like, what is it supposed to mean? And so my goal for you guys is to get through this as quickly as possible. So August 17th is a Monday. It's kind of like my, like, if you're not here yet, like, we're going to, like, put, like, a, like a data set for you. Like, hey, make a decision today because we have to move on. Okay? Make sense? Oh, I see any head nods. All right. Um, data, exp uh, data explored and cleaned. So this is kind of like saying, by the time you get your data set, right, you have to then clean it, explore and stuff like this. This one, I think you guys should feel pretty familiar with. Um, there's always more to analyze. Like, there's always things you can do, right? And it's good to have a firm deadline for yourself, but also this here, just to be like, all right, here's my point where I analyze. And then you say, but there's so much more I could dig into. You put that as your future work and say, these are things that we can investigate further if we had more time. And this is very typical in like a work setting too, where you have data, you know, maybe you already have the data set um, and you want to explore really deep into it, but you have timelines like people, you know, we can't do it like in academia where we can spend, you know, literally multiple years investigating the same things Like we have to kind of move on. So it's kind of useful to know that's like, all right, that's perfectly fine if you didn't explore every single aspect of this project. If someone talks to you in an interview and says, hey, like, have you thought about this, you know, and you're like, dang it, that's the one thing I didn't investigate, right? That's perfectly fine. You can say like, you know, I didn't investigate that because of, you know, um, I wanted to make sure I answered these questions in a timely manner, you know, but I did kind of consider that and you can talk about it, right? So that's the whole point is that you don't need to be an expert in everything about this data set. It just needs, or this project, it just needs to be something that you can gain insight from and re recognize too the places you could have gone more and deeper into it. Okay, cool. Um, assessment start, basically, um, I kind of like to give you guys two weeks. I don't necessarily expect most people to start having an assessment on August 24th, 
but which is I think really, if I remember this right, this is a Monday. Um, but by the time that like a Thursday, Friday comes along, I think there's might be a couple people who would have those assessments. And then that week from, I, I don't remember, I think it's August 31st to September 4th. Um, those are the times where you'll do like your assessments. Like mo most people do their assessment and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of the expectation of where you should be. So by this week um, before September 4th, you should be um, ready to kind of do presenting or at least expecting that you're going to be able to have your capstone put together. Okay. All right. So that's the overall like timeline. And note I put in general timeline because I'm someone who's not a big fan of like specific hard deadline dates. If you are, you know, if it helps you putting a deadline for yourself, perfect. Um, if you need an outside source to do that, I will be perfectly happy to artificially create deadlines for you um, and say, this is your deadline for you personally. Um, but of course, you know, everyone's a little different. And I think sometimes I'm just going to figure out exactly what works well for them. Okay, cool. No questions though on timeline? Uh, yeah, quick question. So um, assessments, are these like, are you just kind of like assessing the progress of where we should be in our projects or is this like an exam, something outside of our uh, capstone? Good question. Yeah. So this might also be just because it's a different instructor. Maybe the terminology is not the same, um, but it's similar to your mod three project assessment, your mod four project assessment. It's just like that, except it's going to be your capstone. Um, so that, that, I don't know if that answers your question. It did. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like your assessment. And it's not like, I, I don't even like to think of a test because it's again, the goal for, in my view, the goal for your capstone is to make a project that you can talk about for an interview. It's like your go-to. Um, so like, of course, I'll like assess and stuff like this, but I'll give you advice even after. So I'll be doing the assessment for you guys, unless some scheduling thing doesn't work out. Um, but what I like to do during assessments is not just say like, oh, you did great, you know, check, 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 check. I say, oh, this is really great. You probably want to talk about this in an interview. It's like, oh, you know, you could kind of expand a little bit more here or like, oh, I'd clean this up a little bit and you'd pass through, but it might be advice for you to think about as you, even after you're done with your um, capstone. Okay. And there's no reason why you can't come back to your capstone and like modify it and do, you know, more stuff. Okay. Cool. All right. So I'm talking about timeline. Let's talk about some advice, right? So this is just my personal advice, right? Um, it, I think it helps a whole lot. You can break this advice, right? Like you don't have to follow this. Like if you're like, ha, Victor, you don't know what you're talking about. I know better than this. And that's perfectly fine. I'm like, you might know better than me right? on a certain aspect, right? So don't feel like you have to take this exact advice, but I think this can be really useful, okay? So one main thing is that when you're trying to choose a project and just give me a thumbs up, does anyone know, like, it's like, I already know what capstone project I've got. Like, I'm like, like I'm so excited. All right, I see a thumb go straight out, right? And then other people are like, uh, I'm not sure. And that's perfectly fine. In fact, that's probably like most people. Most people are like, I don't know what this capstone's supposed to be. Like, what am I supposed to pick? So I will say is that if you can, not necessary, make it related to the industry you want to go in, right? So if you know you want to go in a specific industry, make your capstone project related to that industry, okay? At least in some form or fashion. Um, now, some people say, it's like, I know what industry I'm gonna go through, but honestly, I don't know if I can really do this like for this specific industry. I'm like, don't worry. So the other option, and I think in a sense, almost a sense the better option, is just making sure that you care about your project, that you investigate it and you're interested in it. Because if you have an interesting project to you, you're going to take that time to understand it. And then the best thing is, is when someone comes, when you go to an interview and someone asks you about your project and you can just talk days and days and days about your project, like that shows. And I will tell you when I interview people, like I'm like, I see that. I'm just like, hey, like this person like is passionate about the thing you're talking about. The other thing is, is that when people try to pick a project that almost, how do I say this? It seems like it's boring to them, but it technically was like a good project. Like it's like, oh, like it looks good. You can feel that, like it's pretty quick. Um, some kind of personal antidote, right? Uh, one of my projects I did for um, data science was, or it's more machine learning engine, machine learning, machine learning was, um, I was really interested in American Sign Language. And so I looked at um, classification of different hand shapes for uh, basically letters of American Sign Language. And 
do I expect, you know, at the time, did I expect to go in an industry necessarily with American Sign Language? Not really. It'd be really cool, but it wasn't necessarily like my ultimate goal. But I will tell you, every time I talk about that project to anyone, recruiter or just like an, just another person, it was always just like, I could talk passionately about it. And like even had someone tell me once, like, like, like wow, like you really know this project really well. And that's the thing that matters the most. Because if you can talk about it really well, it shows your knowledge versus just showing a project where you've done stuff on it. Okay, does that make sense, that distinction? Cool. Um, oh, also forgive me for my meme usage. Um, I, I'm not super hip with the memes and stuff like this. I honestly, making some of these memes, you'll see a couple more, I apologize in advance. Um, feels like I'm like, like, a, like a mom, like trying to make memes on Facebook and not quite understanding how memes work. Um, but anyway, I think it helps emphasize my point, which is the important part. Okay, so choosing a data set, you know, pick it from the industry, but it doesn't have to be, it's just something that's fortunate. I say don't use a boring data set. And this is when I say boring like this, it doesn't mean like, oh, it's boring because like it's dry. It's more that this data set is too simple. And this usually happens with mod four projects more than like capstones, because I try to make sure that doesn't happen. Because if you have a data set that's too simple, and I think of like not many features or features are kind of bland or sometimes this happens with very large categorical data. You're like, oh wow, look how many features are. There's like a hundred features in here. And it turns out like the category just doesn't feel like, basically almost by definition, you already know the classification. So you wanna make sure your data set aren't too simple, okay? And we can talk about what that looks like too. Um, and I have actually even, I think we have enough time, but um, I even have a little presentation we can put together by, or I have where I can talk about a little bit of data set and picking those. But um, for the most part, just know that if like you present, you, you tell like, oh, this is my data set, you know, Victor, what do you think? And I say, you know, I think it might be a little too light. It's not being like saying, I think you're taking the easy way out. It's just that I think it's going to be difficult to talk a lot about it and be interested in it versus just being like, oh, it's a data science project and that's kind of it. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense to people. Cool. So the other part is, is that, and this is probably the most controversial part I'll say, like for Capstone, that's I specific, it doesn't have to be completely focused on ML. So the reason why I say this is because I think sometimes people get really excited about using machine learning and they're like, yes, I want to make this machine learning project. But that's not the point of our data science, right? Our data science, using, we're using machine learning as a tool for inference, right? So your ultimate goal is to do to gain insights on some problem, right, through via some data set. And this is where, you know, it depends on how you kind of bring this up. But I had a, for example, I had a student who um, was really like, so, you know, I just don't feel like, I don't know how to, I, this data set's really interesting to this problem. I don't really understand how I would apply a supervised learning onto this, you know, um, data set and this problem. It's like, do I need to get a different data set? And I said, no, like this is a really super interesting data set like problem. Uh, for the record, it was basically, they took um, different, what's it called? They had countries throughout the years, like throughout the, like the decades, uh, all the different countries, and they had different metric scores um, that economists use to like classify different countries and stuff. Like it was like a 400 feature data set um, with like, you know, every year. So we had like 1960s China and like 1960s US, you know, and like, to this and they're kind of like i don't really understand like how i would use supervised learning for this and they were like ready to scrap it and like, like oh no like you seem really interested about this so they made it much more of an analysis problem saying hey what can you learn about this data set and so what they did is like hey can we compare countries from different years to each other so for example maybe i'm just making something up maybe 1970s you know italy is just like you know present day China in some aspect and stuff like that. So they actually use an unsupervised learning technique to help visualize and cluster this information. It wasn't the main focus of the project, but it definitely shined through because it was part of the analysis. And you can hear when you have that kind of part in there, when it's not like, it's like oh, here's an unsupervised learning problem or whatever machine learning problem. And someone says like, what's the point of that? You know, you go like, I don't know, that's cool. Like, it's pretty fun, like having machine learning. Um, it definitely sells a lot when you can talk about like why you're doing this specific technique versus saying like, oh, I'm doing this technique, which is the project. Now, there's some certain projects, for example, I know um, 
I had a student did, a, uh, did image classification on like traffic science and stuff like this. And the main focus was the ML part, right? And so that's perfectly fine. I'm saying like, okay, like, can we design something that detects um, traffic signs and stuff like this, like different traffic signs? And they had, you know, they had issues and say like, okay, what, what worked, what didn't work? That's perfectly fine, but don't feel like you have to do ML. If you have a strong, like, like passion for something and you're like, I don't know how this fits into my capstone, talk to me about it, right? Um, maybe we can figure out a way to make this so it feel it is a data science project, even if it's not completely focused on, I should say, you still might, are probably gonna use ML in some form or fashion, but it won't be completely focused on there. Okay, sound pretty good? Hopefully that's clear when I say ML focus. All right, and again, that's probably the most controversial part. You'll probably even see like in the, the curriculum, kind of say like, oh, it's usually gonna use supervised learning, but not unsupervised learning. I don't agree with that. I think it just depends on what you're trying to do. Okay, cool. Um, quick thing, use a process, awesome or crisp DM. I know this talked about at some point probably early on, but use a data science lifecycle process that will help you a lot in organizing your work and also allow you to talk about the data science project, this capstone, with someone who's familiar with data science. Um, where you can talk about like your methods and stuff. So if you follow those methods of awesome, Chris VM, it'll help you be able to talk about it clearly and um, understandably. Okay. And set many deadlines, right? So uh, I think this, this helps me personally is I don't like deadline deadlines, but I like to say, I'm going to work on cleaning this data set for the next three days. And then after three days, I'm done and I move on. And the reason why I say like I'm done and I move on is because there's always more to do. So at that three days, I might necessarily say like, oh, like what things do I need? Like, can I use this right now? And is it not useful? Okay, what are the main two things I need to do to fix this, right? And then maybe spend an extra day and go on from there. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing what you need to do versus just like saying, like that's why I don't like deadlines. Because if I just say, oh, August 17th, you're done with this part. Sometimes it's like, well, you kind of missed part of it, right? the whole point is for you to know what aspect, and that's where CRISPDM can really help you, or I like CRISPDM, but awesome too, or any other data science framework. Okay, cool. Any questions on this or any general advice I kind of gave so far? All right, sound pretty good, cool. All right, so some fun extra stuff to do um, is like some things that like I say, are I personally don't think are necessary, but it can make you feel pretty cool. And like also like you get excited about it and also you have something to share at the end. So one is like having a dashboard. I think Raphael probably talked a lot about like showing dashboards, is that right? Has he shown you guys that? I know Raphael likes dashboards, so that's why I bring it up. Give me a thumbs up if he's talking about dashboards, like it's very different with that. Okay, see some thumbs up, okay. Um, from some people at least. Uh, so having a dashboard can be really useful. It is not, an, in my opinion, not a necessary part of this project, okay? Part of the reason why, and this is where I'm gonna kind of like shattered glass, you know, like, oh my gosh, really? Um, this, is, this might hurt you a little bit, but hopefully it doesn't. Um, for when you're applying for jobs, when you apply you do your application through LinkedIn, whatnot, right? First of all, we'll talk about this too. Don't just apply on LinkedIn like blindly. Like that's usually like the worst way you can apply. But when you apply and everything like that, not too many people are actually going to dig deep into your project that you share. Like say like, so you list your projects on there. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, but in general, they will kind of look at it, but not dig too deeply, which might kind of hurt. You're like, oh man, like, I did all this work on this project. But in my experience, it's not so much about like what you show, like what you have to show, but what you can talk about once you're in that interview. In a lot of ways, your resume gets you through the door, but you talking to someone is the thing that gets you hired. Does that make sense? Yeah, and this is where like, you're better than resume, the higher the probability of you getting through that door, right? But it's not gonna be the thing that's gonna get you the job, okay? Um, and because of that, it means that like, it's unlikely that someone's going to look deep into your code or project you're gonna show. Um, so one thing that you can use though, like I say dashboard interactive website, is that projects can honestly get you job referrals. Um, this is where, you know, you might have a really cool project and someone might reach out to you and say, hey, like, I saw this thing that you had. Can you tell me more about it? I'd love to interview you for this job. This has happened and it can happen if you do this, um, like create this thing. But I don't think it's the main focus because what that does, it's another way to basically apply your resume, right? It helps you get through that door. 
Um, so if you have a really cool dashboard, some really cool interactive thing that you can show, share off, right? Um, social media, I mean, I, I personally like using Twitter for data science stuff. Twitter can sometimes be a little hostile and stuff like that, but I actually find it really useful in data science. Um, sharing through LinkedIn and stuff like that, you'd be surprised how many people will like find your stuff and just like message you. Um, I've done things like on GitHub and like, it's actually kind of funny. There's been a few times where the same, like not same person, but like people have messaged me and say, hey, do you have a blog post about this? I'm like, hmm, I really should have that because you're like the eighth person who's asked me about this specific project in a blog post. Um, but like, that's the kind of thing, like if you do interesting project and you have it available, people will find you, but it's not gonna be the thing that necessarily gets through the door of like the job you apply to. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why I call it fun extras. Um, and what's really cool, I think is that because your capstone, even though we finished your capstone and finished your assessment, there's no reason why you can't go back to your capstone and make something that's interactive, you know, a dashboard or something that you can kind of share and show off. Um, if you find the time to do this, I think it's a great and awesome thing, but I definitely don't think it's a requirement. Um, so that's my little two cents in it. But of course, you know, if you feel differently, you can totally do it yourself. Just be aware of time. Okay. Um, this also goes with like implementing on like AWS or Google Cloud Platform, some cloud server and stuff like that. I didn't add that in there, but um, if you do it on your local machine, that's fine. Like no one's, no one's going to be like, did you do it on AWS? If you do it on AWS or something like that and you want to talk about it, awesome. But it's not necessary. Okay. Cool. So talking about the fun extras, let's talk about some common issues. So these are things that I've noticed personally working here at Flatiron and seeing people go through capstones um, that usually hinder people like being able to complete things quickly um, or at least on time and like have an effective capstone. So one, not having a clear goal. Remember your goal as a data scientist is like to know a problem and say, what can we, how can we solve this problem or how can we gain insights about this problem? So in a lot of ways, your problem, your business problem comes before anything else. Um, if I have, let's see here, where is it? Oh, it's down here. This thing right here, the very first step, business understanding, right? Before you collect data, before you do anything, you have to say, what is the problem? Now, it, in this case, you might be like, what kind of problem should I do? It might be helpful to look at data sets and kind of explore and see what's out there to see what kind of problems you can tackle. But you still have to have a firm idea of like what you're doing, like why you're gonna do this and what do you hope to gain insights from, okay? And that's where Awesome and Chris can also help you with that process where you need to have an initial like idea of what you care about and stuff like that, or like why you should care about this project, right? Um, thinking you have to have good results, right? So a lot of times people say like, like oh, I didn't, like this capstone is not gonna be any good because like I didn't really get good predictions and stuff like this. And like, that's perfectly fine. Like the process itself is the important aspect. It's not necessarily having like great, amazing results. You're only gonna work on this for at most four weeks. Like think about that for a second that's not very much time from end to end, right? And a lot of projects too, um, in the workplace, you might not have really great results, but you have promising results or promising insights where you can explore further. We're not gonna do that, right? We're gonna say, hey, this is your capstone and that's kind of like it, right? But you could technically go back to it and expand on it, right? So that's why I say like, you don't necessarily have to have like amazing good results, right? But you should have a good process, a good notebook. Does that make sense? Okay, I see a head nod. So I assume one head nod is like equal to like three or four. All right. It's a good conversion rate, I think. All right. Uh, careful with data size and complexity. So be very careful with data because sometimes there's so much data, right? And there's so many things you want to do. Um, the famous one is like, I'm going to web scrape this, you know, thing. And you're like, that's really cool. But is it necessary? And this is where I say, my personal opinion is avoid web scraping unless you specifically want to talk about that in the job interview. And I will tell you web scraping in general is not necessarily a big thing that in a data science interview that they really care about. It's gonna be much more about the analysis and um, going through and getting inference from it. Um, so if you do wanna web scrape or do something that's a little more, you know, a little more difficult to um, get a hold of, uh, talk to me about it, right? So we can talk about like what things you can do. Maybe there's an easier way, or maybe we can kind of like say, okay, we'll take the next two days for you to develop a web scraping part and then move on. That way you're not like spending all the time trying to do collect data where you still have like all these other steps besides just the data scraping, data mining, data acquisition. Okay. Um, I say size and complexity here. So just be careful with size. I think for the most part, 
you probably won't come across too much big data sets. But um, note the complexity is that maybe your data set involves images, right? Maybe your data set involves a new data format that you haven't been across or like the Flatiron you know, curriculum hasn't taught you or maybe something I haven't even talked about. I don't know much about audio analysis. That's not my expertise. That's not something I'm familiar with, but maybe you're interested in it. Know that that's gonna be an extra complexity to your project that you're gonna have to learn, right? So you have to account for that kind of time. So just be careful with like how complex your data and where you're getting it from um, is, okay? Uh, thinking it must be completely novel. I've said this like probably like 20 times now during this whole time. Um, it's not a graduate thesis. It does not have to be a completely novel, like it's like, oh, no one's ever done this. If you do a project that no one's ever done, really awesome, right? Definitely stands out. But it doesn't have to be because the important part is being able to talk about it and go into detail. So I'd rather you have an interesting insight from a problem that is more familiar, like kind of like a typical data science project versus like having something completely novel, but not be able to really talk much about it because it was so complex or so different and everything like that. Um, just kind of be aware that, you know, like, I don't know if anyone's had like a graduate thesis or familiar with that. Usually you're spending a, quite a bit of time like doing this. It's not like a month. It's like, <laughs> like it's a significant amount of time. If you do have a graduate thesis over a month, uh, maybe it's not the best thesis, but anyway, all right. Um, no hate to anyone who's done a month long thesis or something, I don't know. All right, uh, making it too big of a project, just make sure it's constrained to like what your goals are. Like, and that's where early on knowing what your goals are and we can talk that through. If I see your goals starting to get like inflated where it's more and more and more and more, I might say, oh, right, let's take these parts, let's take the essential parts and like keep these other parts for after you're done with your course. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, uh, not considering the time it takes to learn something completely new. This happens a lot where someone's like, oh, I learned, we learned a little bit about NLP, but I really want to go deep into NLP for this project. Um, just know you can do that, but you're going to have to take that extra time before you can really dig into your project, right? Um, and one thing I will say is that if you talk to any current data scientists in industry, I will say 90% of them easily will say people rely too much on machine learning to get the insight where a simple model will do. So your goal in a lot of ways is to create that simple model and then say, okay, what can we do to improve on that, right? And so you will see a lot of data scientists advocate saying linear regression is a really great tool. It's not the only tool, but it can be a really great like initial tool. Um, same thing with like random forest, like in the machine learning aspect. Um, random forest like almost like fixes like majority of your problems. Like it's my favorite um, ML algorithm to go to you don't always need deep learning to do a data science stuff. Um, I think sometimes it feels really like exciting when you do something new, but know that that's not what this caption is supposed to be. It's supposed to say, all right, like how can we gain insight and how do I show that I can show insight to someone who's like the stakeholder. Okay, cool. All right, so that's kind of like all of this part, like this notebook. Um, are there any questions specifically you guys had? Um, about anything I talked about or maybe something I didn't talk about. So how in depth is the project supposed to be? I mean, our, mm -hmm. all of our other module projects are, you know, the three EDA questions, three to four or five, just out of curiosity, like how big are we aiming for? Yeah, I think hmm, that's a good question, right? Because that's going to depend exactly how you define it. And I'm not a, I'm not a fan of saying, Oh, you need three questions or you need four questions for this part because no, no, no one cares. Like, no, you, I'm, hopefully I'm not being too like, you know, blunt, like, but no one really cares, right? It's like, oh, did you do four? Like, oh, you only had three questions? Uh, I really would like the fourth question, right? So I think a big part, oh, go ahead, Michaela. Oh, you you're good, I'm just listening. Okay, okay. So one thing um, I would suggest is starting off with that goal, saying like, what do we want to learn from this problem, right? And then kind of mapping out like how you would get there and that's the stuff that's going to help you figure out. Like the, the short answer, which is kind of like the BS answer, it should be a project that doesn't take you more than a month. Like, which of course you're like, wait, but how do I know how long that's gonna be? And this is where like certain data sets, the EDA is gonna be very quick. You're like, oh, here's some exploration, go right in. For example, if you do anything with um, images, you probably are not gonna do a huge amount of EDA on it because to do EDA on, on projects would rely on you doing basically the project so you can do the EDA. So that's gonna be a much shorter kind of aspect, but most of your time is gonna be spent on developing a model and interpreting that model saying like, why did this work? Why did this and this work? 
Um, if you have more tabular data, you might focus a lot on um, the EDA. You might actually be able to talk a lot about the inference of like what you want to like the whole point of it, right? Say, oh, like these are really important aspects. You might be able to do that without ever touching an ML algorithm at first, right? You have to do that all through the EDA. So your EDA might be like longer than other people's. Um, it again, this is where like it kind of depends. I think where where I kind of have this timeline, I think this kind of helps a little bit. Is that like to help with EDA, at the latest, you should be done with all of your EDA exploration cleaning by that 21st. I would even say before then, I would almost say like, maybe like the 17th if you can, um, because then you can focus on, you know, the other aspects of your project, as well as like writing about it and inference and like analyze it. Like, well, do I need to do more? And like, what things can I do? Do I have time to put in an extra model? You know, I did this model and this model, but I think it seems to suggest that maybe we should look a little deeper in this and you can try a third model, something like that. So I know that's not a very like great answer, like probably not like the most like direct answer, but hopefully that gives you an idea. No, yeah, for sure. That was super helpful. I appreciate it. I was laughing because we make fun of Roth, his favorite, his favorite phrase is it depends. So yeah. <laughs> um, it's always just kind of the answer I expect, but I definitely appreciate the more in depth. So I will get with you personally on that for my project. Yeah. And that's perfect. If you have a, if you're like curious about something, definitely message out. And I would even say like, for the record, I encourage everyone to like message out on the Slack like channel versus just like me direct messaging. I'll answer direct message and stuff like that and everything. But you'll be, I always crack up by how many times I get a direct message and it's literally like the same question from different people. So like it really helpful to putting out there. And you guys are all learning stuff like that. You guys have been together for, you know, however many months now in the same core. It's helpful to see where everyone's thought process is. So, yeah, cool. Um, any other quick questions that people are thinking about off the top of their head or going through? If not, I have more stuff to give you guys, so like. All right, cool. So if you guys think of something, just feel free to interrupt me and right? say, oh, I did have a question. So outside of references. So, all right, so I'm gonna share, the, um, so real quick before I go into all these parts, I'm just gonna share my repo with you guys. So what I do is partly because I am lazy, I just have one repo for all my cohorts. Um, and it just kind of adds up and changes up um, as I put more things in there. So I'm gonna show you guys the repo that I use. And this kind of has like a bunch of material from like the curriculum and stuff like this. And you know, you can go into parts. Like I have stuff, for example, I think you guys are learning about NLP or did machine um, deep learning recently, right? So I have like little lessons in there you can go through. But the part I'm gonna direct you to is finding this project information. So, oops, oh, that's because I made a commit but I haven't merged it over. So um, it will be merged over by the end of the day, but it'll be under capstone and then the capstone overview and you'll look, look at that. It's the same notebook. So you guys can have access to this, but um, the link I sent you out with that repo, that will be updated, but here's a direct link for this version right now since I haven't merged it over. Okay, so um, that's how you can find this notebook if you guys have been taking notes, awesome, um, but you can definitely go over it and then we'll make sure this video is up online too, that way you guys can reference it and stuff. Um, but I do have another video right here. So this is from like back in January with uh, another cohort. Um, I just, I don't have to click on it, but um, this might, it's only a 30 minute video, but it's just me kind of like talking and kind of fielding in questions. This might give you some more ideas and stuff like this. Um, I honestly, if you watch this, like speed it up, like you don't have to watch it like normal speed, like skip around with it or you don't watch it at all. Um, I like to watch videos like two times speed when someone talks slow. Um, sometimes I can talk a little slow when I'm thinking about things like skip, 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 right? Play around with it before you're going through. But at least there's another time of me talking about past Victor was talking about stuff. Um, anyway, so let's see here. We talked about this repo. Oh, that's the repo that you guys should look at for the capstone. So just know, you guys should find it in curriculum, so that's not a big thing. Um, choosing a project. So I'm gonna talk about this. I'm just gonna quickly show you some general advice. We, so this is like, technically you guys are working on mod four projects. So I don't wanna like bombard you with all the things at once, right? Um, but I do have some just general advice and we'll talk about this maybe, I'm gonna say next week, August 10th, right? When you guys um, are hopefully a little more done, if not done with the mod four project. Um, but I do have some general advice just for projects in general, um, like for your capstone and like mod four project. Um, the main thing I wanna talk about is things like your presentation and your notebook. 
um, just keeping things nice and clean and no, no, um, like organized. This is where like I kind of mentioned is that no one really, no one's really gonna like dig deep into your notebook unless they really care mm -hmm. about it. But you can quickly look at someone's notebook and scroll through and know immediately like, oh, this person like really thinks about like how they're organized versus like, oh, this person's just like slapping code together, commenting out stuff, doing different things. Um, so that's really helpful. Uh, narrative, this is right. Uh, you'll hear me talk about if you're with my other cohort, uh, you will hear me talk about narratives and like making sure you have the data story telling, right? You want to tell a story of your data set, right? You want to say like, hey, like not your data set, you have your problems. And like, why is this important? How did I go across this? This is the science kind of part, but it's also kind of good, like just structure to be able to talk about your project. And if you think in a narrative set, when you're doing your project, it's a lot easier to talk about, like in an interview where maybe you're kind of feeling a little nervous and stuff like this, where maybe you're not super comfortable. Um, I think this kind of helps people a lot. I think in general humans, as humans, we tend to think in narratives versus um, other structures and stuff, if that makes sense. Okay. Anyway, um, this is also in the, what's it called? In this repo. So if you, for example, click on advice, you'll find it. Like you can go through it. And we'll talk about this in the future too. So I'm not going to go over it right now. Okay. Um, but I do want to talk about real quick is choosing a project. So I'm just going to go through the side like this. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly since we have almost an hour, right? Um, feel, feel free to interrupt me. So this is more about choosing. This was actually taken from another um, uh, instructor uh, from a while back, talking about like the, basically the mod four project. Um, but I think it applies a lot for the caption. So I've kind of modified it slightly to kind of talk about this. So the main things I uh, talk about is like, where do you start from? Like, how do you know what the problems do? It helps with what industry, right? So if you know, for example, like if you have personal experience in certain aspects, or if you know what industry you want to go into, you can think about that stuff. So like, Typical ones like finance, retail is really big for data science. Um, but there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Some people have really passions for sports and stuff like that, and they can talk a lot about that. There's a lot of sports data. Um, I am not an expert um, in most sports. Um, it's just never really clicked with me. It's never really like something I'm really interested in. But there's some people who are just like, oh, like, they can talk about the nuances of sports, and that's going to really help you in doing a data set and talking about your project. So the more interested you are in something, the more likely you're going to like pick up on those nuances and be able to talk about them. Okay. Um, so some considerations when you pick data sets, right? So this is where, uh, oh, this is going to kill me. I have the wrong two here. Too big. All right. Too big. All right. So when you pick your data set, um, don't, how do I say this? You, there are some exceptions to having a smaller data sets, but you should aim for minimum 20,000. And 20,000 in my head feels small still for most machine learning algorithms. Um, but if you do find a data set, like that's all this is you can find and whatnot, talk to me about it. Um, this might, we might be able to get around this, but the more data you have, the easier it's going to be to be able to like pull insight from it because there's just more options for patterns and stuff like this. Um, just make sure that it's not if it's too small, it's going to be hard for you to like really talk deeply about the project. Okay. Um, there are techniques you can do when they even have like, I've seen projects, like not necessarily capstones, but I've seen projects like with 1000, you know, or even 2000 data points. And you can do some really interesting things, but it means that you have to use some extra techniques like unsurprised learning and other crazy stuff that maybe you don't have time for for a month, but you can talk about maybe doing that in the future. Okay. Um, continuous features are really great. This helps makes this generally makes inference a little bit easier because there just tends to be a spectrum versus categories. You're kind of stuck with whatever categories you get. With you think of like continuous features, like continuous like numerical features, it's going to be easier to kind of like infer like the missing parts if that makes sense. So if you only have like low values and high values but no medium values, usually you can kind of tease out some of those medium values and such. Um, so continuous features tend to be a little bit easier. Um, so I would just try to focus like hey. If you have a problem, you have a data set, see what kind of continuous features make sense and see if your data set actually contains many of those things or many of those, many continuous features. Okay. Um, kind of related to this, I, I say like this is kind of kept from before, shouldn't be more than 50% um, categorical features. This is like, this is a rough thing because I've seen plenty of data sets that have many, like most categorical features, but they also have numerical features. It's just be wary of like mostly categorical features because they can be a little difficult to do inference because you're basically just this category. And also it's just, it, it, 
sometimes those data sets can feel kind of boring, to be honest. Like when I say boring, I mean like when you try to look into it, you're like, oh, these are all just by definition this thing. And you're like, well, that's not really exciting. Like because now you don't have any inference. Basically, all the information you need is contained in the data set. Um, so just kind of be aware of this. And if you find a data set, you're fine. And you're like, oh, it's more than 50%, but I think I like it. You know, like you're like, I think I like it. Let me see Vic, what Victor says. Go ahead and shoot it my way. Okay. All right. Um, you can do do-it-yourself data sets, like web scraping and all that good stuff. Just be careful about time. Okay. Just consider that stuff. Um, know that when we have a format, right, what kind of format you're using. Is it CSV? Is it JSON? Is it are you using API? Is it image data? Is it some other norm, new format like audio analysis, right? Like you want to make sure you know what kind of data you have before you start just diving right into it. Okay. And consider how much time will take to parse this information. Okay. CSV in general tends to be a pretty nice one. APIs are going to take, they're really great, but they can take you some time to kind of figure out the API first. Um, I had a student do Twitter stuff and they use the Twitter API, but it, they took some time to figure out, but they got it eventually. Okay, that's just repeating the same stuff. Um, I'm gonna kind of skip over this because you guys now kind of are at this point, this is more for the Mod4 project. Uh, or it used to be the Mod4 project, it was kind of like whatever data set you want. Um, but just be aware that NLP computer vision, um, those can be very like, I call it information dense um, data sets. And that can be tough to interact with because you just have a lot of information to process. So just kind of be aware of that, especially in computer vision. Can you do these projects? And have I had students do these projects successfully? Absolutely. Uh, just kind of be aware. Just don't think that, you know, you're like, oh, I'm falling behind. I think I'm going to do a computer vision project. It's like, well, okay, let's let's think about that um, before you like, dive right into it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to worry. Don't, anything that requires you to do human input, don't do it, right? <laughs> like, don't like say, oh, I'm going to go, I don't, no one's ever done this, thank goodness. And it's like, I'm going to go out on the street. Well, we wouldn't do it right now, COVID. But like, like, oh, I'm going to take a survey about a bunch of people and like put this information. It's like, oh, cool. Like I spent, you know, three days, you know, 24, like eight hours every day and I got a thousand responses. Ooh, right? That's not going to be fun. Um, so just try to avoid doing it yourself. Um, I don't think anyone's going to have this issue, but it's worth repeating. Science focus. Unless you have a background in the specific science, be wary of this, right? Um, a lot of times there's some technical stuff that you just might be missing. Um, so just kind of be aware of like, if it is science focused, like do you have enough knowledge and domain knowledge to actually talk about this? And sometimes it, you might not, which is fine. It just means you might have to pick a different kind of project or a change of that project. Um, okay, I'm gonna go through here. We have a minute left, I have to head out in a second. But um, basically, uh, be aware of your data, your DOI's data sets. Uh, this is a Trello board. Who's ever used Trello or something like Trello? You know what I'm talking about, Trello? Okay. Um, Trello, I personally like being able to like organize your stuff. This is not my personal organization, like how I would do it, um, but it can really help you. If you are new to Trello or you're like, you're like, I don't know, I might try it. Try it out for like a couple days. If it is not going to work, don't worry about it. Like don't try to learn something new in the middle of a project, right? You want to make sure you're comfortable, but it can really help you organize some stuff. Um, know that you can always analyze more, right? But don't feel like you have to. You don't have to beat this data set to death. Like you can say, okay, there's some parts I would like to investigate, but I'm not going to right now. So I'm going to move on. And that can be your future work. Um, yeah, you can always dive deeper in after the course. So where do I get my data? Well, a great place are all these sources. I personally like uh, Google's data set search because I can just type in like, oh, I don't know, biking data. And boom, there's a bunch of data sets right here already set. Now this is owned by Google, so Kaggle shows up a whole lot, but there's a whole bunch of information on here and where to find it. And it's a really quick way to just kind of explore like what's out there. Um, other one I like to say is like the Kaggle data sets. I think that a lot of them are pretty well done, like well documented, and a lot of them have notebooks already like made for them, so you can get an idea of what's already being done. Um, you won't necessarily don't want to copy and paste that stuff, but at least you are familiar with um, like you can see what other people have done and kind of explore a little bit and expand on it. Um, the rest of these things, you can find plenty of them. Um, our data sets from Reddit, um, awesome data set repo. And I'll make sure to share this with you guys right now. Just make sure you guys have that. So I'm putting this in the chat. And it's also in LinkedIn, find that notebook so you guys can find it. But these are some great places to find your data sets. Do you have to use these? No, like, but if you're trying to find it, it's a great place to start, okay? All right, everyone. Well, um, any last questions where I have to go? I know I'm kind of over I'm from other things, but that's okay. No questions at all? All right, cool. 
I'm sure you guys will have some, you guys will never ask questions ever again, right? You guys are probably figured this all out. So you guys probably did your capstone in the background while I was like talking. So this was that. Um, all right. So I will see you guys. Like, are you guys going to focus on your mod for project? Good luck with all of that. Right. Um, know that I will still be on Slack. If you want to message me and stuff like that, perfectly fine. Um, well, not perfectly fine. You should message me. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll have like these study groups, like where we can talk a little bit more, um, like any details stuff like that. I also want to talk a little bit about like how, when you go look for jobs and stuff like that, how you should use LinkedIn. Um, you, one thing I will tell you right now, if you send a connection to someone like on LinkedIn and you don't really know them, put a little note in it, right? Like, don't just say, can, like send like, oh, I want to be your friend or whatever it is on LinkedIn it's called. Um, because it just adds a little extra like, personality to it when you have like talk about something and we'll talk about like what that can look like how you use connections how you should apply um like i mentioned don't like i don't know if anyone knows what i'm talking about like blind applying on like linkedin like you see those easy apply buttons on linkedin Who, like you guys i'm sure you guys look at jobs right you see those easy apply buttons yeah try not to use those um <laughs> if you can because i literally have talked to people who i know who are like recruiters and stuff and they literally say i don't even look at that inbox which is crazy, right? And you're like, what? what do you mean you don't look at that? Like people are applying through that because it says apply and it's like, yeah, I don't look at that. Um, so we'll talk about some stuff too um, over these next few weeks, okay? All right, everyone. Well, great meeting you all. I'll, I look forward to like kind of seeing you guys and seeing your guys' projects and everything. You guys always come up with really great projects. So I'm really excited, all right? And I'll see you guys around. Okay. Thanks, Victor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.